Good morning everybody and welcome to Virtual Zoo Day 5 here at Chester Zoo. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Chris, I'm one of the hoof stock keepers here at Chester, uh, working on the giraffe section and today I'm going to introduce to one of our species we have and that's our fantastic Red River Hogs who have just come out this morning and are just having a bit of a sniffle around on the paddock. So it's a special day for these guys today. Their house here consists of a split paddock and an inside area and this area here that they're on this morning um, we leave over the winter without them on here to allow it to recover this is the first time this morning they've been back out here um, since the end of last summer so a bit of a bit of an event for these guys this morning and um, we're hoping we'll have lots of activity for you guys to watch so a bit of a background to the species here at Chester on our giraffe team we have three different wild pig species we have the common warthogs which are from Africa we have the Babarusa from Southeast Asia, and we have these guys who are the Red River Hogs from Central and Western Africa. Now, we have a family group of six, so starting from the bottom up, at the back over there on the left you can see our three sisters. That's Kaya, Ivana, and Kitaka. Now they're coming up for two years old. It's actually their birthday on Monday, so these three triplets will be two years old on Monday. So happy birthday, girls. Um, in the middle there we have their big sister, Lasala. So Lasala is coming up for three years old. She'll be three in about three weeks. Um, down here on the right is the mother. This is Marley. She's the mum of the group and she is 10 years old and she'll be 11 this month as well. So you can spot there's a bit of seasonal breeding going on. All these births in May. She's the mother to all these others. And last and certainly not least is our boar, our big boy there in the middle. Now, I've told you the names of the females. We have Lasala, Marley, Kaya. You'll notice they're all quite exotic sounding names, and that's because here at Chester we have a bit of a tradition with many of our species of naming our animals after the areas that they're found. So they'll be given Christian names from the areas that they're found in the wild, or maybe even named after things like rivers or mountains, you know, in their natural habitat. So Lasala, for example, has a brother who no longer lives here. He moved to another zoo called Kinshasa. Kinshasa being the capital city of the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is one of the places that these guys have found. So our animals all have, generally, names relating to the areas they're from. The exception to this is when we have a species, or an individual that comes in, shall I say, from another zoo. Our boar there, our big impressive looking male, is called Confetti. Uh, he came from Landau Zoo in Germany a few years ago. Uh, the origin of his name is a complete mystery to all of us, so I don't know, maybe if anybody uh, of German connections is watching can enlighten us as to why that name is relevant but uh, well certainly yeah his name's confetti and you do seriously get some odd looks during feeding times standing out here shouting confetti at the top of your voice a lot of public tend to look at you like you've lost your mind um, but he's a very nice chap and fearsome as he looks I mean if you see his face you're just getting a rear view at the moment but if you see his face he's quite a fearsome looking there he is quite a fearsome looking boy with his big bony projections on his face but he's actually a really nice guy. So when Confetti came to join us, we had a bit of a, a gap from breeding for a while. Marley, the mother of this group, was actually the last birth here 10 years ago. Um, and we hadn't had much luck with breeding. Now our old male, Rick, sadly died. So Confetti was brought in as our new breeding male and we hoped that him and Marley would hit it off and maybe things would work out. And without going into too much gory detail, particularly at breakfast time, they did hit it off very well indeed and shortly afterwards we had two piglets Lasala and her brother Kinshasa um, and then two years later we had or a year later we had the other three girls so the breeding procedure we obviously leave the adults to it they know what they're doing um, once we confirm that the female is pregnant um, we build we built a nesting den inside and overnight we start separating it from the male so that she can build a nest as they would do in the wild. They would build nests in the forests in the wild. And, uh, and then we leave her to it. We put cameras up so we can witness the birth, hopefully. And then after a pregnancy of approximately four months, around 120 days, we, uh, we're blessed with piglets. Now, when born, they look very, very different to how they do now. Obviously, size wise they're much smaller. They're not much bigger than a guinea pig when born, but they are covered in stripes and spots and this is obviously a, a camouflage for where they live in the wild. Mo mo they're mostly found in forests, rainforests, dry forests um, and sort of savanna grassland and things like that um, and a very small piglet would make a fantastic snack for any carnivore out there. 
So they're very, very heavily camouflaged when they're youngsters. Um, and those stripes and spots gradually disappear as they mature and then you end up with this fantastic ginger colour that we've got now. Um, so yeah, once the piglets are born, we monitor them very closely. We make sure that, we've, that the mother is capable and is doing the job properly. Um, now obviously with Marley, when she was a first time mother, it's quite a nerve wracking experience because you know they, she may not know what to do, she may struggle. But actually she was fantastic, she was a bit of a natural and she raised the two piglets. Uh, very successfully. Then comes the sort of hair raising bit if you like. We have to introduce dad. Um, we didn't know what confetti was going to be like with youngsters. You know, pigs are omnivores. These guys will eat anything. I'll tell you a bit more about their feeding in a short while. We didn't know if he'd see the piglets as his, as his youngsters, as his family, or whether he'd see them frankly as brightly coloured snacks. So when we put them together, it's a hair raising time. We monitor it very carefully, and I'm pleased to say that Confetti was actually a fantastic father from the start. Um, he's just going for a... Is he going to go in the water? I thought he was going to go for a swim then, but he's changed his mind. Um, yeah, he was a fantastic father from the start. The piglets, both litters that we've had, have been absolutely obsessed with their dad, fascinated by him. They, they, they start the first few weeks of their life just with their mother, and then all of a sudden there's this giant ginger brute in their life and they're just fascinated with him and it was brilliant to see because they don't leave his side they don't leave him alone and you'd often come past and see him sleeping out in the sun chilling out covered in piglets climbing all over him I'm a dad myself I've got two very small kids who are currently watching at home I think I know what it's like to have little monsters climbing all over you and he is very very patient very tolerant and uh, yeah it was a real joy to behold the real test with a lot of male pigs is food. Um, they are very, very food based and that's when even the most placid male, male hog can become more aggressive when they become very protective of their feed. Um, what we found is even, as you can see now, feeding quite happily with his family. A little bit of handbags now and again, but generally very, very placid. I mentioned that this paddock is, you know, the first time they've had access to this paddock is today. One of the things it has which their, their winter paddock doesn't is this pond. They're called red river hogs for a season. They do like water and they're often found in, found in habitats with, with permanent water. Um, part of their natural diet is water plants, reeds and lilies and things. And what we try and do during the closed season when this winter paddock doesn't have animals on it is improve it. We grass seed it and we do put aquatic plants in. We put lily pads, we put reeds and grasses in. And we go to a lot of effort to try and make this a really sort of natural looking, ha looking habitat. The problem is that hogs are, if nothing else, completely destructive. Everything you make, all the hard work you put in, they annihilate it in minutes. Um, and we found that they're particularly fond of lily pads to eat. So as I mentioned, the real test with, is with food and the tolerance with food. Confetti would swim in this pool to retrieve lily pads, which he's a big fan of eating. We found he was also taking lilies back to the side and giving them to the piglets. I think initially the piglets were stealing, but eventually he was seen actively swimming out and bringing back lilies and aquatic plants for the youngsters to eat. Fantastic behaviour to see and, uh, and really nice that, uh, that we could trust him with these young ones. So it's good that we've got a good breeding male on our hands. So I've mentioned diet a few times. In the wild their diet consists of many, many, many things. Like all pigs, these guys are omnivores, real opportunist feeders and they'll eat pretty much anything. So in the wild they'll eat a lot of plants and shrubs and grasses. They really like rooting for tubers and roots. Um, they have a really, really solid disc in their nose which acts like a shovel and they're fantastic at getting through even really solid ground. They can really, really break up a paddock and we expect this paddock to look very different in a few days and weeks when they've really given it what for. But yeah, roots and, and things like that, fruits, um, they'll eat small mammals, they'll eat lizards, ground nesting birds eggs, um, really really fond of carrion, they'll scavenge any dead animals they find, they'll, 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 they'll strip clean. Um, and they also have relationships with other species in the areas where they live. So they're found in the, primarily in the jungles in Central and Western Africa as I mentioned. And they share this habitat with a lot of the other species, some of which we have at the zoo. So the buffalo that we have here, the Congo buffalo, um, chimpanzees, things like that. And they'll actively, they've been actively seen they've been seen actively following chimpanzees where they're feeding in the trees to pick up fruit seeds and things like that 
any fallen fruit where chimps are feeding and they'll hoover up from underneath. They've also been seen, slightly grim, but sifting through elephant dung. Um, in these areas you get forest elephants um, which pass seeds in their dung and hogs will quite often follow these small elephant herds uh, and sift through and see what they can find. So here at the zoo their diet is slightly different um, because obviously we can't import all these fantastic exotic plants so we find equivalents which are easy to come by in this country. So here today you can see I've given them some willow branches which they've hoovered up a bit of the pellet now and now starting on the willow branches. Um, we give them branches all year round and I'll show you why. At the minute they're loving the new fresh leaves that we get in the spring and summer but also we give them in the winter sticks. Now again you get some funny looks when you get seen throwing things like this to, uh, to animals because it doesn't like much of food but we throw them in like this and they come out like this. So they'll eat the leaves as you can see now but they also love tree bark and you throw these sticks in and 10 minutes later they look like this. So um, it's good that we can give them this all year round. Now I'll just give these sticks out and see what I'm going to Make sure I don't hit one live on the internet. So aside from the brows, the branches that you can see, we also give them a pellet, which again I can show you just here. So they have a pellet, which is specially formulated for animals, it's a high fibre pellet. And the here is obviously just what I've got some more food. Now they're given two pellet feeds a day. Now normally these are given in bowls inside just to ensure that every individual is getting a set ration. So they've had their morning feeds and this is just a little bit of their pellet feed which we've done as a scatter today. Uh, they also get two fruit and veg feeds a day. So in the mornings they get broccoli and apple which I'm going to give them in, in a moment. And then in the afternoons they get apple, as uh, they get sorry, pear, sweet potato, carrots and grapes. And aside from that they always have access to hay as well. So I've mentioned the habitats that they're found in the wild and they're found throughout Central and Western Africa. An alternative common name for this animal, this is the red river hog, but an alternative common name is, is bush pig. Now this is quite confusing because there's another species in Africa also referred to as the bush pig. Um, so they're separate species but with the same common name, just to confuse matters. They do overlap and you sometimes get hybrids. The range is quite broad and one of the strange things is that apart from mainland uh, Africa there is also populations of bush pigs on Madagascar where they were not originally found and there's two theories as to why this has happened. One is that they were introduced by humans possibly as a, as a food source. Another theory is that they've, they've rafted across from the mainland on papyrus beds um, almost by accident. It's 250 miles between the mainland and Madagascar. If that is in fact true, that's a very impressive journey for a pig to make overseas. Now in the areas they're found, as I've mentioned, they already, as I've already mentioned, they, they share the habitat with a lot of different species. Some of the areas they're found is, is incredible habitat. They're, they're found with hippos, lowland gorillas, forest elephants, Congo buffalo, things like mandrels which we have here at the zoo, anybody who's familiar with the zoo probably will know, know about our mandrels. They also share their habitat of course with predators so their, their territory range does, does overlap in parts with lion but it's not their primary predator. The main predator of these guys in the wild is thought to be leopard. But they'll also fall foul of things like pythons, certainly young ones, crocodiles where they're present in river habitats. Um, and things like spotted hyenas as well. The babies obviously are so small, they, they're basically um, fodder for just about anything that eats meat out there, certainly birds of prey and things like that. But the adults are quite formidable. I mean, Confetti here, he's not even a big male. Uh, he's not as big as our old, but he was, he was weighed last week and he's 75 kilos. So to put that into context, I'm about 78 kilos, so he's nearly my weight. It's quite it doesn't look like he's that big but he is, he's, he's actually quite a big powerful strong animal so it would have to be a strong powerful animal that would take them on. Leopards certainly will. As with a lot of species 
conflict with humans is a big problem in the wild so the habitats that these guys are found in does overlap with human settlements and strangely it has a, a conflicting effect so in areas where you have human settlements in the jungles and the forests their main predator leopards are quite heavily persecuted you think about people raising livestock or even families and children leopards are often trapped and killed and so leopard numbers in the areas where people are found tend to be lower than areas where people aren't found and that means that there's not as much predation takes place so red river hog numbers tend to get a boost from the lack of leopards the problem is that conversely these hogs as i mentioned will eat just about anything and that certainly includes crops so there's a lot of conflict with people local farmers growing crops and so often the pigs are killed also um, because of that human uh, human pig conflict they're also killed for bush meat which is pretty standard for a lot of species like this um, it just stands to reason that villagers living in areas where these pigs are present it's a it's an easy food source and so understandably you can see why it happens there is organizations or there are organizations in place that work with trying to reduce the impact of the bushmeat trade um, to ensure that there's a steady population as things stand at the moment these guys they're not currently conservation dependent but it's still always worth monitoring wild numbers just to ensure that that remains the case i'm just going to give them a bit of their fruit and veg feed we normally have this a little bit later, but we'll save some back for it later on this morning. One interesting fact about the enclosure here at Chester is that although we've had red river, red river hogs for a long time, any uh, any older, visit, any older visitors to the zoo will probably remember the species that used to be kept here and it's very different. This actually used to be our lowland gorilla habitat. And we're going back a good few years for that. But the, um, the building at the back there, which you can just make out through the trees, is the tropical realm. And there are old gorilla dens in the tropical realm there. So, um, But we're going back a good few years before my time and that's saying something. Okay, so that's just about it for our red river hogs this morning. So I hope you've enjoyed meeting them. They're a fantastic species, one of the unsung heroes of the zoo for me. Um, but yeah, so we've got events throughout the day, uh, a few more uh, virtual experiences. The next one, which make sure you tune in for, is 11 o'clock, and that's at our chimpanzee house over there. Um, so you get to meet the chimp keepers and hear about, about those. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Everybody stay safe at home and stay positive, and we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Okay.